All right, thanks for letting me demo today. Uh, my name is David Warner. I'm an MVP, work for Catapult Systems, do a lot of logging and blogging, and love working with the community. So reach out if you have any questions or just want to collaborate. Today, I was going to demo on SharePoint Library Components, specifically a technique that I call simultaneous parallel de development. So we'll start out with uh, a brief overview of Library Components, just because we have a lot of new ones on, and uh, some may not have been exposed to it yet. So we'll let them know exactly what it is and what its benefits are. And then we'll talk about how we can develop a Library Component and a Web Partner extension simultaneously in parallel. Uh, so we'll see how we will gulp serve both at the same time, port changes that are required, and then what those what those benefits are. And then we'll see an actual demo of it all. So what are library components? It is a, a SharePoint framework solution, as you can see here, uh, that allows us to include all kinds of functionality in it, stuff that might otherwise be included in the web part or an external resource. Uh, and our web parts can then connect to it or our extensions can connect to it and it will only load once on a page, right? So uh, imagine having some custom uh, development code that you need for your organization or you want to include PNPJS because why wouldn't you? It's awesome. Uh, or any other kind of functionality that you would want to include. And it is a SharePoint framework solution, so it still gets stored as an app uh, in the in the uh, app catalog and it benefits in all the, all the same ways and you can access it from all of your web parts and extensions again, and it loads once on the page. So what exactly is simultaneous parallel development and how can it be achieved? So obviously you gulp serve when you're doing SPFX development, uh, that does not change here. You will do that with both your library component and your web part, your extension, uh, but it, they both will by default uh, spin up a serve server with local host 4321. So there's a collision that could happen there. So we wanna ensure there's no local host port collisions between your solutions. Uh, and then of course the connection to our library component is based on the NPM link, right? So when we change the port for our library component, you may be thinking, well, wait a second, how, how is the workbench or any other component going to find it? We're used to working through that 4321 connection but it's the NPM link and the magic behind that that makes all of this work and allows us to change that port and everything still function as expected. We'll see a demo of that, of course, uh, and I'll include some links if you're not familiar with NPM link that will help you uh, understand it a little bit more later. The benefit, of course, is that the task runner uh, watches both and automatically rebuilds everything as we save. Uh, which is fantastic because are we really going to go to everything in a library component and know that it's perfectly developed and then switch over to our web part and only ever work in our web part from that point forward? Probably not. We're going to iterate back and forth, make changes, maybe correct some mistakes we might have made. So it's natural to want to go between the both, uh, go between both at the same time. So let's see what that looks like in a demo. So let me set the stage here. I've got VS Code on the left, and I've already got it open to a folder that includes both, <clears throat> excuse me, a library component and a web part. Now I've already scaffolded these out, so we're not going to waste time doing that. Uh, and I've already done the NPM link to connect uh, the library component to our global node modules, as well as the NPM link on our web part to connect it. So to the uh, connect it to the library component. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and gulp serve on our web part. And so we're not going to use a browser right this second. I've already got one up that we can reference later. And we see that spins up. We're doing our web pack and it should load pretty quickly. And there we go, we're ready to go. So now let's do the same thing on our library component. But this time, what we're gonna see instead of the nice green local port opened is we're going to see some, some red alerts, right? Uh, if we scroll back up, address is already in use. Of course, naturally, that's because our web part is utilizing it and we want it. That's how we interface with SharePoint through our web part or extension. So we'll go ahead and kill that. And, and truth is that'll still work, but nobody likes red errors and who knows what else might go wrong. We want it to be functional completely. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. And we're gonna go into our library component, specifically into config and serve.json. Now this is the part that we wanna change right there. It's using that port as we all know it to be 4321 and so we'll just change that to anything really that we know is not gonna conflict with maybe something else running on our server or on our machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that as all fives. And now we'll go ahead and we will re-engage Gulp Serve with no browser. 
and we should see it work working successfully. We see green, great, it's been spun up, everything is working, and we have our reload. So now let's see how this works for us in practicality when we're doing development. We'll go in and look at the source of our library component first. Simple, out of the box, it comes predefined or pre-created with a name, just returns the name. And so if we go into our web part, we open that up again. As I mentioned, I already included it and imported it, ran the NPM link, and I've already created the instance of it. So if I come down here and do library component instance dot, we see that name right there. We see it's available to us, right? But as we're going through and making changes, let's go back to our library component. And I'm going to go ahead and add another function here. And this function is just some predefined content that we'll take a look at in a moment. All right, just returns some HTML that we want to use, and I've clicked save. And now you can see the task runner has reloaded. It's very quick, happens very fast. And so now when we go back to our web part, I can go ahead and now we see our another method is there. PNP Parker is now there for us. That was what the uh, function name was called, right? So we see that right, right there. And so now instantaneously, didn't have to re-gulp, didn't have to reserve, didn't have to rebuild the library component. It automatically saw that I made the change. It re-web packed and rebundled, and everything is good. So now we can do that. And we, as I said, we see that showing up immediately. I also didn't have to resave inside of my web part at all. It just showed up and it was aware. So that's awesome. So now let's go ahead and let's see what that looks like as we <clears throat> want to actually display it in our web part. So this is just uh, a standard out of the box web part with content that we all are familiar with. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with just a, a reference to that particular control uh, because and that function because we want to go ahead and display that HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We see that has now uh, kicked off the gulp task runner uh, here over here and it's done. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the results are. So I'll refresh my page here. I'm working within a tenant uh, on my online workbench. Uh, and if I come here and just do a search on library, we see there's my library component. And when I load it, oh, what the what? SharePoint developer by day, superhero by night, Parker. Now, I'm not saying Parker is Batman, but I've never seen him and Batman in the room at the same time. So, you know, you, you have to be the judge. But a uh, cool way here to develop your library components at the same time you're working with your web parts or extensions. And by the way, as you see stickers coming soon, I'm getting some of these made. If you like them, then feel free to let me know and I can send some out or send some at uh, some events. But it's a really cool way. Now, where can you get help for library components? Let's go back over to our slides. Here is links uh, to two library component uh, documentations from Microsoft, both fantastic. Uh, and I will paste them here in the chat. You can access them uh, there. There's an overview as well as a component tutorial, walks you through, shows you how to create them the whole way, explain some of that NPM link magic that I was referencing. And then also down below, there's some more SharePoint library component champions. I've been doing a lot of uh, evangelizing on this. I really love library components, but Alex, Sergey, and Bartamon are all awesome guys in the community that are also doing a lot with library components. So definitely check them out. Um, and we can uh, do stuff together. So I just saw a question from Andu, curious to get an answer to what is so different about library component from NPM package. Okay, so uh, the NPM package, uh, where the NPM package is JS bundle is hosted in a CDN, other than it's hosted in SharePoint. Well, uh, you, it's probably a longer story than just a quick answer. When you do an NPM uh, import into that, it's going to, I, I'm not sure what you mean, but when you say it's hosted in another, I know hosted outside of SharePoint, but when you do an import, obviously it's going to import that package into your solution. So I can do I can do it via voice if you want. Sure. So I guess what what is the value that a library component adds over using an NPM package? Because with an NPM package, I can always just mark it as an external and point to an external JS bundle. Yeah, so I mean, one of the benefits is that it's going to be hosted directly in your tenancy, right? So uh, I, I guess you could also mark it as external and uh, point it to maybe if that was, you know, hosted in your, if you somehow hosted it in your SharePoint tenancy. Uh, but the SPFX is the library component is 
what am I trying to say? L living in your SharePoint tenancy, right? So you're probably going to benefit from some performance there by having access to it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a little more controlled, I would say, right? So things that live externally, you may or may not be able to always control when and where or how they're going to be served up and, act, you know, if they change, whereas this is full control of that. Okay. I'm sure there's other benefits as, as well. Uh, and feel free to chime in, AC, you're... I guess I'm just, I'm, I keep asking the question and I haven't gotten someone to really say like, you know, but I, I, nothing against library components. I'm just curious, like, why do we have a SharePoint-ism for something that is already something that can be solved? Because if I own the NPM package and I publish the JavaScript bundle into my own CDN, or if I even publish it over to the Office 365 CDN, I still own everything. And so to me, it's, I just am curious what, what is the what is the what is the value add over SharePoint? I get all the thing about that you can put it in different places, but um, it's if it's just if it's a SharePoint specific thing, you only can use it inside of SharePoint. Where you can where if it was an NPM package, you can get the exact same benefit and use it in any kind of a web based project. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I guess some of the other things too is uh, as Tom brought out, it's bundled, right? So that's one of the benefits, I guess. And I'm sure you can bundle it with Webpack and any other kind of NPM import and package. Um, I think the I think the other thing that I enjoy, and again, you can do this as well in in any because really what's behind the scenes here is still just web dev stuff. But I like how I can also set it up to be uh, optimized bundling, right? So combining all of those things together, um, and you can pull in just pieces of the library component, and and you can customize the library component. Some of the other things that you can include into it is is not just functionality but things like svgs or fonts icon fonts or images um, and i guess that makes it nice to have it in one nice neat little package so theoretically you could include an npm package in the in the library component maybe not necessarily externally i've just imported them so they're inside the library component um, but i personally like the control there and it's all within the guise of SharePoint in the tenancy and in a way that I control. And of course, again, you can do that uh, in another way when you're pointing externally, but I just like how it's all nicely neat and neatly wrapped together within the, the different SharePoint um, tenancies and components and stuff like that. Sure. So I, was, I, I wasn't trying to challenge you. I was just trying to. Oh, yeah, yeah. No worries. My only point of the thing was just to make, just to see. It, there's multiple ways to, as they say, to skin the same cat. And so Absolutely. I'm just, just trying to see is there some people choose one way, but they choose another way. And by asking the question, I'm just trying to get someone to uh, pin down the here's the technical reason of why you would choose X over Y. That's all. I would I would say that there's no real technical reason. Uh, so um, to, to, how would I put this in a completely tra transparent uh, way? The reason why we shipped to library components also for third party is that we started using those internally at, uh, at some point. Why do we use them internally is that we have a pretty massive uh, code base, the, the SharePoint applications. Uh, we, we create applications, which is a concept which is available, which is not available third party, but they're huge. Uh, our solution is massive. That's why we developed the Rush components, which uh, Wartam and demoed in some of the calls. Um, but one of the th benefits of using the library components is that we can actually version everything uh, in a in a one solution. And again, matter of opinion, matter of a, a approach. Um, the key point to understand, like AC was saying as well, it, there's no right or wrong. Uh, people can come to these things and say, but what is the right, rec what is the recommended approach? Well, it's, it's really up to you. Um, we use library components in our development heavily. Uh, as out of the box SharePoint is being extended or then on that admin UIs are being extended. Um, is that the right thing to do? Debatable, but um, it, it is more bundled as a one large package rather than, than versioning things separately. Again, it might be that you want to version things separately and you want to version things separately in your CD and, and then you want to probably choose an alternative route. There's no right or wrong. There's multiple different options. Um, and one of the things what AC said, which is a good thing to remember, library components is a SharePoint ism. It is SharePoint specific thing. Library component as such is not being used uh, outside of SharePoint. So it's something which we have introduced as part of our development cycle. So again, debatable. Whatever feels 
the most natural for your developers and for your development team, I would recommend using that, uh, whatever it is. So. Yeah, sometimes it just comes down to a matter of preference, right? What what fits better into your organization's development model and yes. patterns and practices, no pun intended, totally. uh, that works for, for each person. So kind of tomato, tomato, both both ways work uh, and both ways probably work well. Uh, but, um, you know, preference, I guess. Yeah, I'm just trying to get past the is it just a tabs versus spaces thing, which. Yeah, to me, to me that's it all is. It is. Which yeah. to me that is, and I'm just, and I'm not trying to downplay them or anything. I'm just trying to see if there's, I haven't seen it. So that's all I was asking and more than happy to get into a, uh, have a debate on it too with you uh, at some point in the future. And, uh, and just for the people who are actually hearing this uh, discussion as well, you need to remember that AC is asking these questions because he wants you to hear the question and the answer. Mm -hmm. He's not asking this question because he would might be wondering uh, the options. So he has the facts. So trust me. Yep. <laughs> Vesa, Vesa has heard this many, many times. So I was just <laughs> doing it in public just to, just to get somebody else's input. I wasn't trying to put David on the spot, but just trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we know each other. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it is an important thing to have an open discussion and, and really understand the different options and having resources shared in the chat window so people can make their own educated, uh, let's say, decision uh, on, on what model they actually want to use. So super important thing as well.